So what is going on guys, I am Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another Zombies video where today we are going to be looking at documents and letters that you can find in Alpha and Mega. As I'm sure you will know, there are no ciphers in this map which is very strange because usually we've had them since... I think Black Ops 2 in Origins and Mob of the Dead, we had some ciphers, but definitely all throughout BO3 and BO4 previous to this, there has been ciphers in every map. And it's unfortunate that we don't have any in this one because they usually give us hints on the future of zombies. They give us storyline information that we wouldn't get otherwise through quotes or Easter eggs. And it just gives the community something else to do. So the fact that we don't have any in Alpha Mega, in my opinion, is quite disappointing. You could say, well, it's because this is DLC 3, DLC 4 we know is the last zombies map, so maybe there's no need for any, but I don't know, I was just expecting to see some in this map, but what we do have are some documents and letters. There are 8 of them in total, to be honest, some of them by now are pretty irrelevant because the map's been out for a little while now, we've heard this information in game, whether it's in quotes or through doing the easter egg, the storyline, so we've already heard some of this information in game already, but the first one is a document that gives us a bunch of codes that can be added into Rushmore, and when you do, he gives us information on different topics, such as Project MK Alpha, the ADAM Initiative, Project Toy Soldier, he will also talk about Broken Arrow, the APD Interrogations, Prison Holding, and stuff like that. So that is the first document. We also have a couple of memorandums that talk about the Pentagon Thief. Again, I've already done a full video on his story in Alpha Omega already. These documents don't really give us any new information that we didn't have before. They talk about Yuri, how they think he managed to gain access to the Pentagon, one of the most secure facilities in the world. They believe that the entity known as Samantha may have teleported him there, which we know she did. They also talk about Gersh and the Ascension Group and how he's been missing for a long time now. And there is also more of an insight on their interrogations with Yuri Zavosky. As we can see in Alpha Omega, they did end up killing him. I, d I don't know why I laugh, that's really not funny. Um, they, they ended up electrocuting him to death. It was specifically Purnell who did this and when Yuri wouldn't answer his questions, well, Purnell took it too far, electrocuted him to death and we can see his dead body in Alpha Omega in a bag. So that was a very unfortunate death for him. And it also says in these memorandums to do with identity K-642, who is the Pentagon thief. I've convinced my superiors that Yuri would be an ideal candidate for Project MK Alpha. Our attempts at interrogation have been all but non-starters. With Project MK Alpha, we can access his mind in ways traditional interrogation never could. If we want to find out what happened that November night, this is how we do it. Further, Ident K-642 may provide a critical insight into the entity known as Samantha and what future attacks she might be planning. This is of the great interest of the Department of Defense and the Central Intelligence Agency. I'm sure the president, God rest his soul, would have wanted these answers. I'll have further details in the coming days, but you can expect the subject's delivery sometime next month. So we can see here in this letter that the president, who would have been JFK, or at least that's who I'm assuming this is about, is not alive. The date for this memorandum was January the 25th, 1965, so either JFK died of what he died of in real life, being shot, or he was killed by the zombies because this memorandum was written a few years later. We do know as part of the fractured timeline on November 6, 1963, JFK along with Nixon, Castro and McNamara were killed in the zombie outbreak at five. That literally happened a couple of weeks before his death in real life. But we also know as part of the original timeline, JFK survived the outbreak. I'm still guessing if we were to learn more about him a couple of weeks later, in the zombies timeline, he would have been killed. They usually go off real life events. Or not, who knows, I mean, in the zombies, they can do what they want. But it isn't clear in the memorandum which fate JFK met first. Like I said, there's also ones that talk about the ADAM initiatives, the robots in Alpha Omega. This one is from August 17th, 1965. It says, memorandum for file, number one, Broken Arrow's ADAM initiative has exceeded expectations as home service personal robots. Between the work done at Camp Edward and at the hand Site, the government has expressed interest in expanding the scope of the program. Number two, the Department of Defense has requested preliminary exploration of Project Toy Soldier, repurposing an ADAM as a fully functioning military automaton. Considering the current and significant scope of the ADAM's abilities, the upgrades required for this modification shouldn't prove too time consuming. Number three, for Project Toy Soldier's exploration phase, I've assigned a team to 
to conduct modifications to an existing ADAM. Once this process has been reviewed and approved by Director Purnell and General Sawyer, we will move to Phase 1. And number 4, to access the Project Toy Soldier prototype, codenamed Sergeant Adam, please submit code, and then we have 7626, into Rushmore. And we know that is, of course, the Easter egg you can do in Alpha Omega to access this robot, which essentially is like the civil protector from Shadows of Evil. So that gives us more of an insight on how the robots were transformed into toy soldiers. Like I said, there are a couple of more insignificant documents, in my opinion, since we've already learned about them in-game. They're not really important now. They talk a little bit about Element 115, the nuclear testing site, the APD, or the American Pyramid device. But the most important letter, in my opinion, is from Purnell that was wrote on September the 8th, 1966. This is a letter from him and he says, I had two dreams last night. The first was of my mother. In the dream, I am a child, eight, maybe nine years old. She holds my hand as we walk down the street, but I break free and run ahead of her. Behind me, I hear her screaming. She begs for me to stop, to turn around before it's too late. When I finally do, it's indeed too late. Two angels float above her on either side. They're dressed in robes, bearing huge carnivorous teeth. They have no eyes, at least none that I can see. I try to run back to her, but with every step closer I take, she floats higher. I try to call out to her, but I have no teeth. I try to reach out to her, but my arm is too heavy to lift. But as long as I tried to save her, I felt guaranteed that the angels would take her. But if I let her go? The second dream I had was here at Camp Edward. I was inside the APD in the middle of an interrogation. There was a system malfunction and the electricity of the elemental shard ricocheted around me inside of the pyramid. The electricity shot into the base of my spine before spreading throughout my body. It shot through my arms and my hands, through my legs and out of my feet, up my spine and out of my mouth. Then I hear the voices, but they are not in my dream. They are the ones always present always lingering in my mind. The voices that have clung to me since I was first introduced to the ether. They had dug a hole deep into my dreams and propagated. Observers of the nightmare which unfold in my mind. They whispered words that soothed my soul. I was safe. I was secure. If I wished to reach Agatha, this was what I must do. This was the path to achieve ascension. I know I am not the first of my kind. Others have come before me, many driven mad by the same urge. I know it to be Richtofen's grandest of schemes one that would drive him and the others insane. They all failed, but I will be different. They believe their human form would cross the bridge to the higher plane. They believe their mortal bodies are worthy of entering Agatha. They are wrong. Purnell. So we can see in this letter the change in Purnell since he came into contact with the ether. As he says, anyone that comes into contact with it changes. They become obsessed with this urge to find and reach Agatha. We saw it with Richtofen back in Black Ops 1 where his grand scheme was to take control of the zombies, get inside of the MPD pyramid in an attempt to reach Agatha, but as Purnell says, everyone has failed because he believes that mortal bodies are not worthy. And as we see in Alpha Omega, Purnell turns himself into the Avogadro. In his dream, he says he was inside of the APD pyramid when there was a system malfunction and the electricity from the elemental shard ricocheted around the pyramid and shot into the base of Purnell's spine, turning him into the Avogadro. And now believing he was immortal, worthy of entering Argotha, we know that's what he was trying to do, to find a way through. He says he has two dreams. The first one was when he was eight or nine years old as a child. He was walking down the street with his mother. He runs off and then behind her, after hearing her scream, he sees two angels float above her on either side. He mentions them wearing robes, having huge carnivorous teeth. This description of them that he is giving sound very similar to the Keepers. You could also say Dr. Monty and the Shadow Man. We know their second form also looks like this as well, but they don't wear robes, or at least we haven't seen them. They wear their usual clothing, whereas the Keepers do wear these tunics. So Purnell could be describing Keepers or Monty and the Shadow Man. We've heard them being referred to angels previously, but Purnell mentions about them taking his mother away, and every time he tried to save her, he couldn't. There was something holding him back. When he tried to call out to her, he had no teeth. When he tried to reach out for her, his arms were too heavy to lift. But he says as long as he tried to save her, he felt guaranteed that Monty and the Shadow Man would take her. 
These dreams sound similar to the ones Pablo Marinus had in Derizon Dracker, where he was pumped with Element 115 by Group 935 and he began to have these dreams. It could be because Purnell was exposed to so much 115 or the Elemental Shard, he began to have these dreams as well. But my question is, why would Monty and the Shadow Man be taking his mother. I'm not too sure, it's a little bit weird. Usually when our characters have these dreams, as we saw in Pablo's case, they are real. They end up happening, whether it's in the past or the future. And as we see with Purnell's second dream, where he's inside of the APD and turns into the Avogadro, that actually happened. So if that's the case, his first dream of the two angels taking his mother, you would have to say has happened as well, or is going to happen. But again, I, I don't know why they would want her. Maybe to convince him to get her back, he needs to reach Argotha. He needs to find a way through. We know that is the goal of our Primus and Ultimus characters right now. They are trying to open up the gateway so they can go to Argotha, destroy it, which means destroying the Aether and destroying Dr. Monty. So this is definitely the most interesting letter in Alpha Omega. Let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments section below. As always, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest content on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.